us, how you got here, we're glad you are here. Um, today I wanted to talk about uh, food and water, um, in case times uh, are less than ideal, uh, maybe stuff's hard to find in the grocery store, maybe money's tight uh, in the future. Um, all things we can kind of mitigate by looking ahead and planning uh, a little for now. Um, but I wanted to talk about food and water um, as it pertains inside that um, breakdown, evaluate, and accumulate uh, framework. So let's get started. All right, so uh, food and water. Uh, oh, number one, uh, this is gonna be kind of like a flyover. Uh, I'll be more information, more details in uh, my book on Amazon, Preparedness of Primer. Uh, if you want more information, there's some links and stuff also inside that book. It's only Kindle edition right now, uh, but uh, check that out if you want. All right. So probably one of the things you're going to need to do first is determine, so who are we storing food for? Um, is it just myself, myself, my wife, uh, myself, my parents? Uh, are there kids involved, grandparents involved, uh, things, uh, things like that? So um, there's calorie calculators online, you can go uh, and find, like put in the number of adults, number of kids, and it'll uh, give you um, projected number of calories you're going to need per day. And that'll give you kind of a starting point about, so you take, okay, so how long do I want to prepare for starting out? Uh, how, uh, how many, how long do I want to prepare for? So that'll give you kind of a baseline of from a calories per day perspective, also consider like how much work may you be doing in this time frame and the climate you're living in, cold climates may require higher calorie counts, things like that. So again, fly over here. Um, so uh, especially when starting out, um, so there's an adage like in the uh, preparedness community, uh, eat what you store, store what you eat. What that means is so, uh, if you, there's a particular style of or type of canned soup that you enjoy, have extras of those. Uh, don't wait till you get to your last can to go buy more. Wait till you get down to like, when you basically two cans. That would be like your zero in your pantry. Then you go buy more. So you're never without, uh, without that. So, um, so that's going to be, uh, so eat what you store, store what you eat. That's one thing to keep in mind. Um, probably starting out, one of the things everybody can do uh, would be something called copy canning. Um, credit where credit is due. I uh, first heard about this from Jack Spierko on the Survival Podcast, so I did not come up with that uh, term myself, uh, but copy canning. What this means is when you go to the grocery store and you've got your list of things that you normally buy, um, you know, you've got your food budget and everything, buy one or two cans extra of something that your family enjoys, um, put, and put that away. Um, you're going to spread the cost out over time. The beauty about this is even if you're on a tight budget, like an extra can of corn or an extra can of green beans or that extra can of soup, uh, every time you go shopping, it might be a slow accumulation, but you're going to be accumulating slowly. And that's something you can still do on a very, very tight budget. And that's going to stock up your pantry, make it deeper, if you will. Um, yeah. So the, uh, and again, once you reach that first goal on food, and then maybe you've moved to the other areas of preparedness, you swing back around to food again, you take a look at what you've got, uh, you evaluate it, and then you set your next goal of maybe you had a week before, now maybe your goal is going to be 30 days. So that's kind of how that fits, fits in. Uh, along with that, um, one of the next things you can do, um, and this is more of a uh, fire and forget, set it and forget it kind of a kind of a, an approach uh, would be there are plenty of places online uh, that have freeze-dried food and uh, probably roll in some footage of that right here um, and you can um, 
just buy that. Usually comes in like for for a single person, it would be a, like a thirty day, thirty day emergency food uh, bucket, something like that. That's like kind of like the baseline. Um, so you can accumulate those or something like MREs from you know military meals ready to eat. Have cases of those um, on on standby. You may not be consuming that every day. Uh, but uh, that's something that has a long shelf life, so you can uh, you can get that, uh, find a place, a uh, cool, dry place to put it, uh, put it away for a rainy day. Um, just keep a you know keep a keep an eye on the expiration date. A lot of them are good for years and years, uh, but it's still something you want to keep in the back of your mind. Maybe put, set a reminder on your phone for your you know uh, 2034 calendar, whatever. Um, the, uh, that would be like kind of dedicate, dedicated, dedicated emergency food. And, um, the drawbacks there are, um, the, uh, may not be, the food may not be as familiar to your family. Um, so especially kids, uh, depending on their, uh, pickiness, they, you know, might, there might be oatmeal in there, but it might not be the exact kind of oatmeal they're used to. Um, so that may be a drawback. So uh, maybe get that, open a packet or two, test it out, um, see if they like it uh, kind of a thing. Uh, the other thing is there is a more of a cost up front, maybe a few hundred dollars up front for like 60, 90 days worth of food. Uh, and, and what kind of food is that? Is there any protein involved? Is it just calorie dense carbs um, that's all things you can look at um, but there are plenty of those uh, places uh, online um, I don't really have one that I would endorse over another at this at this point and again you're gonna want to uh, look at those calories, that calorie calculator, how many days would this let us uh, ride out um, some kind of some kind of food shortage. All right. Um, kind of, so we're talking about, we've talked about coffee canning, uh, extra of what you eat every day, making that pantry deeper. Uh, we've talked about uh, kind of freeze-dried food or even storing food in buckets, things like uh, rice, um, flour, uh, pasta, five gallon bucket, mylar bag, oxygen absorbers. I can put, I can do a whole, probably end up doing a whole other video out there though there are others on YouTube for that. Um, seal that up. Now you've got, uh, you know, 25 pounds of rice or, or whatever stored in a bucket that would last for a while. Make sure you write the date and time on that. Um, but that's another actually less expensive way to do a long-term storage item. Um, so after that, um, depending on how long you think something may last, uh, gardening. Gardening is a good skill to uh, get used to already. Uh, if you don't have a garden, uh, it's actually pretty fun. Uh, you can learn a lot doing it. Uh, in my experience, don't have a lot of success like the first year. We started a couple different gardens at, at uh, a couple of different houses, and uh, first year doesn't always go uh, well, but you learn a lot. Um, so, uh, and that's a great way to produce your own food. You know where it's coming from. There's no uh, pesticides involved, um, and other than some of your time, the cost is, is minimal for what you'd pay for uh, the seeds or the seedlings up front. Um, uh, something else to think about uh, is if you're going to be in a situation where food is scarce, are you also potentially going to be in a situation where is, is the power on? Did you have to leave your house? So how are you going to cook that food? So um, something like even as simple as a uh, camp stove that you take camping with you. You know, you'd sit on like a, on a picnic bench hook up the small propane to it, turn those lighter, you know, those burners on, and uh, cook your food that way. Um, if you're still at home, do you have extra propane for your gas grill or extra charcoal to, to use your grill and cook food uh, essentially over an open fire? 
kind of a kind of a thing. Um, so that is something else to consider. Um, as a piece of this, we're going to cover heat and energy and things like that in another video. So some of these things definitely overlap um, when it comes to being prepared, like food. How am I going to cook the food? That's going to require some kind of energy. So there you go. Um, next, we're talking about water, uh, especially for these freeze-dried foods uh, that you're going to be looking at. Um, water is going to be essential because most of it, you just need to heat the water, pour it in, right? But you're going to need good, clean water. So how are you going to accomplish that if the tap uh, isn't turning on right away? Um, so if the tap does turn on, but maybe you're under a boil advisory, uh, again, uh, something to be able to boil the water with uh, so that you can drink it afterwards, uh, use it afterwards. Um, so uh, when it comes to especially drinking water, uh, FEMA uh, recommends uh, one gallon per person per day uh, to make sure, you know, uh, staying hydrated and everything. Uh, that doesn't necessarily include cooking, uh, cleansing, uh, or hygiene or anything like that. Um, so if the might have to boil the water if it's coming out of a tap or you're getting it out of a nearby stream if the tap is just not working uh, you maybe have another water source uh, or uh, getting yourself a filter uh, something like a Berkey filter that's what we've got um, it's like a, it's got a lower reservoir it's got an upper tank you put on it with the filters you pour the water in the top it gravity feeds down into the bottom uh, then you've got uh, clean water to drink you just need a source to pull it from again stream uh, creek, river, lake, pond, um, uh, probably do a whole other uh, video on that in the future. Um, other ways to store water, uh, if you wanted to store water before you would switch to having to use a filter, uh, would be um, old uh, two liter pop bottles. Uh, if, you, if you're somebody that drinks soda, uh, empty out those sodas. Uh, wash them out real good, uh, fill them with water, put like a single drop of maybe, like bleach in there to keep down, you know, keep out any bacteria and uh, store those. Uh, then when you need them, you've got those stored somewhere. You can also buy like the one gallon jugs of water, say at Walmart for pretty cheap, uh, stack those up somewhere um, if, you've got, if you've got the room for that. They also make these huge things, so if you if you see an emergency coming, like you're like, okay, uh, we're gonna need to hunker down. Um, they also make things that will fit, like big water bladders that fit in the bathtub uh, that you can just turn on your bathroom faucet, let that fill up, and now you've got uh, this uh, emergency water uh, ahead of time. Um, so that, those are just some uh, just some examples. Uh, thinking more long term, uh, there's also uh, rain catchment barrels where you could hook up uh, like something to your gutters, have it filter down into a, a catchment barrel, check your state and local laws because believe it or not in some places uh, catching rainwater is illegal. Uh, so there's that. Um, so that's kind of the uh, food and water situation. Um, you know, one, once you reach your goal, reevaluate uh, set your next goal and then begin that accumulation process, whether it uh, involves uh, the coffee canning process, uh, maybe jumping into freeze-dried food or MREs, um, and then uh, turning your hand to gardening skills, uh, water, uh, be prepared to potentially boil it uh, with some kind of energy source, Be uh, have some uh, bottled water stored. Um, and maybe in the you know think about in the future investing in uh, that filter. Uh, I would recommend something gravity fed, like I was talking about, versus like a backpacking like pump filter, because that's going to get real old real fast having to pump that uh, to filter water. So, um, if you guys have any questions, put them in the comments below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, let me see if you. Uh, like this shirt here. Uh, this is a shirt from Black Guns Matter, uh, Maj Touré's 
um, organization. Uh, I really like a lot of what they do. Um, actually, I like everything they do involved in uh, educating communities uh, about uh, guns and gun safety. So um, Google them, check them out. Um, not affiliated with them in any way, just like what they do. Um, but I'll see you guys on the next video. Um, later.